All right. Well, we have to. Uh, we got to talk about Vince McMahon, and uh, I think most of you have seen the story. Obviously, I'm going to read a portion of the front page story here. Probably won't go into all of the graphic details. You can read those for yourself if you would like to. And there is a 67-page filing. 67 pages. And I'm about halfway through. And, oh man, holy smokes. You got. I mean, you don't have to read this thing, but if you read it, it's like... And it's weird because it's kind of in... Uh, it's in two parts. Where it starts with a uh, a recap of of everything, and in the recap of of everything, it actually names individuals like flat out. It talks about John Laurinaitis and Vince McMahon, and it doesn't say Brock Lesnar, but it says former UFC heavyweight champion. So I mean, we kind of uh, have limited options there, but then later. So they do a whole recap, and they talk about Vince, Laurinaitis, and the former UFC heavyweight champion. And then they go uh, to a, a, a portion where they explain, like, who everybody is, Vince McMahon is this, blah, blah, blah. And then, after that, they go into this even more detailed telling of the story. But in the second more detailed telling of the story... They start referring to everybody as like, you know, WWE employee number one, WWE employee number two. It's it's like way more vague, even though earlier they actually named certain individuals. So anyway, uh, there, I mean, what's written on the front page is like the gist of the, the first part of the lawsuit filing. But there's plenty more. There are a number of individuals whose names haven't come out that are also mentioned. And, you know, they give some, uh, they give some details as to, uh, you know, who's done what and whatever. So my presumption is that, uh, we're going to be hearing more presumed names. But anyway, so the lawsuit was filed by, uh, against WWE McMahon and John Laurinaitis. And the person filing the lawsuit is Janelle Grant, a former WWE employee. And she is the same individual whose secret three million dollar settlement with mcmahon led to him being investigated by the wwe board of directors in 2022 the lawsuit alleges that grant felt pressured into a sexual relationship with mcmahon due to threats he would use his legal resources against her if she did not mcmahon's demands grew increasingly depraved through her employment with the company from 2019 to 2021 she was also expected to engage in sexual encounters with Laurinaitis during her employment, according to the lawsuit. The uh, It alleges that McMahon promised a sexual encounter with Grant to a WWE wrestler. It says here, reported by the Wall Street Journal to be Brock Lesnar. As noted, they claim this wrestler was a former UFC heavyweight champion during contract negotiations in the summer of 2021. And uh, this wrestler, they said... Uh, you know, agreed to uh, resign, and uh, and there's more. Through all the trauma, we'll read some of this, but not all. Ms. Grant has endured profound suffering and silence, feeling of exploitation, loss of security, fear of facing the wrath of WWE, and McMahon's army of attorneys if she were to come forward and bring to light the egregious acts detailed herein. Time has passed. Ms. Grant seeks to hold defendants accountable for their reprehensible and unlawful acts for her own sake and for others. It states that her and McMahon met in 2019 while McMahon was living in a penthouse in Grant's apartment building. Grant had been struggling financially due to years of caregiving for elderly parents. So her parents were both ill, and uh, they both ended up passing away. And I believe that uh, after they passed away, uh, due to the, uh, I guess it was a bankruptcy, and so she lost her house and everything, and so uh, somebody at the apartment complex said, you should meet Vince. And so uh, this is not even something to like, it's not funny, but like the way that lawsuit describes it, I won't even get into it. Vince's reaction, you can go read the lawsuit when, uh, when he was approached about the idea of helping her. So at the time she was struggling financially, McMahon befriended Ms. Grant giving her hopes of a new life, promises of a yet-to-be-determined role at WWE. 
So it goes into great detail in the uh, lawsuit filing of, uh, of like, Vince, like, slowly working his way into uh, being more and more, uh, you know, an increasing lack of boundaries is the way that it was described here. And he kept saying, you know, we'll, uh, we'll get you in, we'll get you in. At one point, he called her to his uh, condo, and she walked in, and he goes, I'm in the walk-in closet or whatever. And she goes in, and he's only in his underwear. And, of course, it escalated from there. And McMahon, at one point, warned Grant, allegedly, to keep their closeness a secret, stating he had, quote, world-class legal resources on speed dial to deal with people who became a problem. And uh, I actually don't have the wording from the lawsuit here, but uh, maybe I'll find it after the break because the wording is actually much worse than, you know, resources to deal with people who become a problem. So it says she felt ruined, uh, trapped between being ruined by his legal resources or succumbing to the pressure of a physical relationship. And then he began sending sexually explicit pictures and videos of her to people inside the country alleg- uh, company, allegedly. One of the people, former UFC heavyweight champion, another was a WWE referee. And uh, then there are a lot of details about the sexual encounters, how the depravity increased, things I will not talk about here on the air, but, I mean, it's all over the place. And... Uh, Plenty more. I don't even know how much more of this to even read. But anyway, eventually, it says here that uh, Vince informed her his wife had discovered their relationship, this being Linda, who elsewhere in the lawsuit, he notes that uh, they are no longer together. They are only together for uh, on paper for business reasons and that she's in the past. But she found out about it. And he said that Grant would need to leave the company wanted her to sign an NDA in exchange for payments, and he basically told her, you know, it's either going to be that or, you know, lawsuit and public humiliation, etc. So eventually she signed, and uh, she claims that the lawsuit, WWE's internal probe into allegations against McMahon in November of 2022 was a sham. She said she was never contacted by the company. She's the one that this all broke because of her allegations. She said the company never contacted her, despite her stating she was willing to participate. So, anyway, we'll get some thoughts from Lance and Mike after the break. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Alive. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. We'll start with Mike. Your thoughts? What can you really say? You know, um, even if only a little bit of this is true, it's awful and it's disgusting and it's depraved and it's a incredible, horrific abuse of power and just nasty. I mean, there is an accused rape that took place inside the office and... We'll have to see as more of this goes along, but as has been mentioned by Wall Street Journal and others covering this from the business world, it brings into question the breadth of the board's investigation that was done into Vince and what what got him out of there in the first place. You know, the... It may have revealed the the NDAs, but why did the investigation stop there? Did it choose to stop and avoid its eyes and other, you know, issues that took place? I I, I don't know. I don't know. And, and we'll have to see how it, it all comes out. But it's 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 horrible. It's a horrible, horrible story, a horrible experience for this woman, what she is alleging happened to her. And. I, you know, from there, does it affect the on-screen product? No, but I have a feeling that there are a lot of people there that probably could and should be worried because a lot of what's talked about in this uh, complaint is 
that several corporate officers knew about this and how many of them have remained since after the TKO merger? I, I don't know, but there's going to be a lot to answer for because it very clearly states that WWE and many officials knew what was going on. And there is a a culture there that was fostered that allowed harassment and sexual exploitation of of women. So it, it is just no matter how you cut it, it's a terrible, nasty, terrible story. Lance. Yeah, look, I, I was one of the few that said he needed to be gone when the story first broke. And I was outspoken against him being allowed back into the office, being allowed back at shows when he came back. And when he came back, I stopped watching the product and only just recently started seeing some of the shows out of necessity. Like, this is, you know, when you were reading the, the account of how this started, it's like, that's classic sexual predator stuff. Find someone down on their luck and start grooming them and Ugh. bending them to your will. Like, not only should he be booted off the board, take his keys to the office away, bar him from going to shows, and I think there needs to be a legitimate cleaning house of anyone who covered anything up, who knew about this. Like, this is absolutely disgustingly horrible, and he needs to be gone and done, and I hope there's criminal charges brought if any of this is even remotely true, which with there being so many NDAs and a long list of things, it's like I can't fathom how it isn't. You know, there's uh, the, when when uh, the company was sold or they did the, the merger, however you want to term it with TKO, one of the things was there was uh, an incredible amount of redundancy between the two. There were there were and, and as soon as the thing went down, it was like, you know, there's going to be a lot of cuts. You know, we don't need uh, multiple people doing the same job. So, you know, certain people are going to do certain jobs. Other people will no longer be doing those jobs. Everybody, everybody in the former WWE that was in any way involved in this should be gone tomorrow, today. And it's not like, oh, well, you know, how would this thing continue on? I mean, you did a merger. There, there's no job here that you could you could remove somebody from today and not have an immediate replacement in place by tomorrow. So, you know, there's there's other names that have not come out yet, and I guess we'll see if they do come out. But, I mean, I can't imagine, you know, by the end of the day today, or at least by the end of the week, Vince McMahon still being a part of TKO. It seems inconceivable well let's see what ari's got let's see what morals ari has because somebody in the twitch chat asked or said that ari needs to weed out any accomplices that are still there a asap we'll see what ari does you know dana white what is on camera slapped his wife there was no move made whatsoever even with all these allegations even with the knowledge of the ndas ari still was up there and palling around with Vince, and if Vince went anywhere, I would demand that he sticks around and all that nonsense. And let's be honest, the only comments that he has made, Ari Emanuel, that is, about Harvey Weinstein were attacks on CAA where he was basically, in my opinion, only commenting on it to run down CAA and not to hype and to hype up Endeavor as a place where people would want to be represented. So it didn't feel like it was coming from a moral position. So we'll see what he does here. We know what his position is when it came to the $400 million that Endeavor turned back and gave back to Saudi Arabia after Jamal Khashoggi was killed. He was all for that. And then went on a podcast and said, I don't know really why we came to that decision. And of course he does that at a time where the Saudis wanted their new soccer deal, their broadcast rights to be renegotiated, and they did that. Endeavor did that. He turned the other way and didn't say a word about WWE's current deal with Saudi Arabia. So we'll see what Ari Emanuel has, but I'm not, I'm not betting that he takes a great moral stance or really jumps out there in the next 24, 48 hours, but we'll see. Well, we will see. The story is everywhere. Everywhere has this story today. And uh, 
I guess we'll see. 67 pages is noted. If you want to go up there and uh, be horrified, you can go read it. Um, and am I and right? By the way, I just want to throw this out there. I, I apologize, Lance. Anybody making number one, please, just to me while I'm I'm pissed off here. WWE, don't make this about AEW and WWE. That's number one. Don't be so stupid. Don't be so lame to, as to do that. But also, don't take some of the things that are in there that are really salacious and nasty and crack jokes about them. Because at the end of the day, what you're cracking jokes about is the fact that a woman was sexually assaulted or is alleging that she was sexually assaulted. So everybody center yourself for that. I apologize, Lance. No, that was worth it, Mike. Good good comment. Uh, am I right in thinking that this has come out because Vince didn't follow up on his payments to her as well? I believe was, that's that's the, yes, that's the claim, is. and that which uh, null and voids the NDA. Which well, yeah, Vince is claiming to... that the story coming out must have come from her. So I, th I think that's the deal, where he's claiming that you know she must have talked to somebody about it, which is how the whole thing came out. So she broke her NDA, which I presume that she's denying. She is saying the what it says here at the, and I would have to find it is basically, and I will double check this as we go along here. After the initial million dollars, payments stopped. As a result of payments stopping, the NDA then basically became null and void. But I'll continue to check that as you guys go. But yes, I believe that is the, the story that he stopped making his payments. And so that's why this whole thing came out. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.